right, this is Jake Wolfenden with Summit Safety Group, and I am here to walk you through the OSHA 300 e-file site. The first thing you're going to do is go to the OSHA.gov website, and right on the landing page, you will see that OSHA is now accepting electronic submissions of injury and illness logs. So the first thing you'll do is click here. And you're, see, you're gonna see a bunch of stuff here where it says don't download a CSV file, stuff like that, but you're gonna go immediately to launch ITA. You're gonna click that. And since you're a new member, obviously, you're gonna create a new account. And so you'll see that right up here, and you're gonna click that button. Now, as you go through, you're gonna go through and fill out each one of the fields that has a red asterisk by it. So there's only a couple that don't, like job title, that's not necessary, but all of the others are necessary. Now, I've done screenshots to kind of show you uh, for, for time's sake, uh, so I don't have to go through and fill all this stuff out. What this will look like is you go through, put in your name, last name, company name, email address twice to make sure that it's confirmed as you see here once it is once it is confirmed you'll see a little check mark put in your phone number put in a username and then you'll have to go through this little deal here that confirms that you are not a robot once you are done with that you will hit continue um, and then you will move on over to step two and this is to create an account. Now this is just the terms and conditions like you're gonna find on any other site, any other application that you download on your phone. It's just a, it's, it's basically their, uh, their legal stuff that uh, uh, nobody ever reads. So uh, you basically have to acknowledge it unless you wanna get an attorney and go through all that, you're more than welcome to do that. But otherwise you will click I acknowledge, click that and then you will also then click the continue button. And on step three, you will see right here that you have created an account. It will say thank you for registering. And then it will send you an email to that email address that you, uh, that you input in there. Now, as far as the email address, I do wanna make a quick point. It's important you use an email address that isn't gonna go anywhere anytime soon. If an individual in your organization leaves, you will have to contact OSHA, uh, their site administrator for this site to actually reset your email, username, and password. It's also important to note that if you have multiple establishments, you'll need to fill out a form for each one. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a bit. But remember that an establishment is defined as a single physical location where business is conducted or where services or industrial operations are performed. Um, and then there's some other things that go through. So typically, if you have a location or office that has a different address than the main office, that office is required to report their OSHA record keeping logs when they are when they're over the uh, 10 employees throughout the year, uh, which would be the, for the hard copy logs, and then over 20 employees throughout the year for the e-file 300 logs. Now, if you never reach a total of 20 different employees per calendar year, including temp workers and part-time employees, then your establishment doesn't need to submit an e-file 300 log. So you don't even need to watch this video anymore you can uh, click me off but uh, remember that if you are between that 11 and 19 employees then you will have to uh, still maintain a hard copy version as well just like everybody else at your physical location so once you do that uh, I will show you what the link looks like in your email address you will see this little link right here it's for one-time use you'll see that your username is even up here at, at the top once you click that it will take you to a page that looks just like this and it says that you have just used your one-time login link it is no longer necessary to use this link to log in so please change your password so immediately you will go in and input a password now it must meet the, rec the criteria that's over here in this box um, it is not until you have each one of these elements in there that you will see that it looks like this and it will say that you your password policy is passed and then at that point, once you have and confirmed your password and you've written it down to make sure that you're not losing it, click save, and then you are ready to go. So what we're gonna do next is actually gonna go to the login page, and I'm gonna show you, once we log in here, mine is test, oops, test username 579, and then I'm not telling you my password, but it did meet the criteria. So we're good to go. I'm gonna log in there. 
I'm not going to save that right here. But so here is the injury tracking application home for your establishment or uh, group of establishments. What you'll see here is actually if you go through here and uh, you'll see for batch data transmission, if you highlight under each one of these little eyes, it will actually give you more information, which is actually pretty helpful. And right here it says use this method to upload or transmit large amounts of data. Your data will be considered submitted upon successful processing of your file or transmission. So this is really if you have multiple establishments, this is the way to go. So I'm just going to show you real quick what that looks like. Now I'm using a Mac and I've noticed that the CS v templates and the csv uh, samples when i pull them up you can see that it's just kind of mumbo jumbo so i don't know if that's also that may just be an apple deal and hopefully they'll be able to fix that pretty soon but also um, each one gives me something kind of crazy so i don't have that csv file to actually show you but once you've once you actually go through and download that template you upload all your information then you can actually go back choose a file uh, you'll click that and then download that CSV template um, right here. And then basically you agree to all the terms and conditions again, and then you're gonna upload that file. And then I would imagine that they're gonna actually go through and review and make sure that everything is, uh, is working properly. But if you're using their CSV template, then I would imagine that you don't have any problems. So let's go back here. Um, for manual data entry, which is going to be the majority of companies, um, they'll even put here, use this method to enter and submit your data through the web portal by manually entering your data into the web forms. This is recommended for small amounts of data. Okay, so once you go in and you're ready to create your establishment, you will click that. And then if you go through here, in fact, even the uh, the definition that I gave you earlier about the establishment, uh, they actually give you that here, which is great. Kind of reminds you as to, um, for those of you that do have multiple physical locations, it's important you understand that uh, most likely that you do have to do something for each establishment. But again, only if they meet the criteria, which is a number of employees per calendar year. So go ahead, you're gonna enter your establishment name. Uh, company name, as you can see here, see here is optional, uh, but you do have to put your address, city, state, zip code, all that good stuff. And you do have to have the NEICS code or industry code. And th this is important for a couple of reasons, because they've actually given a list of uh, high hazard industries. And uh, I've actually done some videos on that. So uh, you may want to go back and take a look at that. But if you click over here, it kind of gives you again what the uh, NEIC NEICS code means. Uh, let's just say that you are in construction. That's going to start with a 23 something. And then there's just a long list of different options that you can go through. Um, so make sure that you input that correctly. Uh, talk to your insurance company if you have any questions about what maybe that industry code is. A lot of times they can they can help you with that information. What they're also going to check here and verify is that you um, are actually between that 20 and 249. Because uh, otherwise, if you're at under 20, then you'll you'll notice that uh, that you you don't actually even need to to file anything. Um, this year, this reporting year, whether you're over um, 20 employees or over 250 employees, everybody's doing the 300A log only. So, uh, also note that right here it, it does talk about sal salaried, hourly, part time, and seasonal workers that contribute to that total number. Um, and then down here, is this establishment a part of a public sector government entity? Um, basically, what they're asking here is that if you are some sort of government entity, we all know that the government does not uh, like to manage itself. So it's not going to here either. So if uh, you are government, it will say that you do not need to do that on either local or state. But uh, the majority of us are going to be private industry. So then we would click no. Once all of this is filled out, then you will click save. And after that, it's pretty uh, it's pretty short and sweet. I mean, that, that's about it. You'll have to go through and input some data um, pertaining to your um, your actually your incident and illness logs, and it's actually quite simple. So, any other questions that you all have, I am more than happy to help. Just reach out to us at info at summitsafetygroup.com, and we will be happy to help. Good luck, and remember that this is actually not due until December. Um, so this is not something you have to do right away, but I would urge that you do kind of get on the site as I just did and kind of get uh, get used to it, play around with it a little bit, especially if you have multiple establishments. Again, Summit Safety Group, and I'm Jake, and I'm out.